Hey there everyone, CPO here, and today is Hutchinson Beadlocks Day. Let me show you what I got going on. These bad boys, the Hutchinson Rock Monster Beadlocks are going on overclocked here. And I'm here with my buddy Paul Warren's shop, uh, World Tour Off-Road. Uh, he's gonna help me, I have to break down these 37s off of my existing uh, Mickey Thompson wheels. And then, uh, and then we're gonna mount these up and he's going to uh, finish the process by balancing the assembly. And then I'm gonna hang out out here and uh, put all of these onto that. So now that Paul has this tire freed from its previous rim, we can go ahead and mount it on one of these Hutchinson rock monsters. Let me just show you what's in the box here. Comes with a hardware kit. I'll show you the specifics of this here in just a second. We have a rubber O-ring, very important to uh, keep the seal between the two halves of the rims. We have the uh, inside half of the rim. This is our actual bead lock. Uh, more on this later. And then this is the outer face uh, with a nice uh, foam protective covering. All right, so because I'm going to retain my TPMS sensors, uh, because I really like them, uh, we're gonna have to add our sensor off of the other rims, basically the um, valve stem with the built-in TPMS sensor. We're gonna add that to this inner bead lock and we're gonna do it with this provided bracket. And uh, also in here is a small screw and this barrel uh, screw assembly. They also give you a small amount of thread lock that will come in handy for this process. All right, so what I found in the bead lock is the side with a smaller hole. The other side doesn't have it. So if you don't see it, flop it around uh, and there's the hole. And I'm basically just shoving it in the tire just to kind of hold it in place. And then what we're gonna do is install this bracket onto here. Now that little barrel uh, screw assembly um, is going to be pushed in the female side from the bottom. Uh, there we go. But basically what I'm doing is just pushing that through, which now gives me a threaded female side uh, for this uh, male screw. And then we're gonna put this in just like that. But this is one of the places I'm gonna use some thread lock. Then the next thing we're gonna do is insert this screw right here. And this is just gonna keep this whole assembly from rotating. And now what we wanna do is push this valve uh, stem assembly into here. And then uh, this is the other half of the TPMS module that I'll screw on once I get this in there. You know, I've tried to come up with a fairly reasonable way to get this on with normal tools, and these guys seem to fit the bill for me, but I wanna lubricate this before I try and push it through. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use some of the tire lube that I have available to me, but uh, even uh, soapy water, something like that would be super helpful for lubricating this um, as you uh, put it through. Now I'm not gonna use this again. It's not holding air, it doesn't have to have a seal. What I wanna do is just get it locked in to this bracket. And then what I found is if I can get on this post, keeping in mind I still wanna use the female side of that, and squeeze, there we go, just like that. So you can see now how that is sitting there. Now this part, like I said, its only job really in this installation is just to hold this sensor in place. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and line that up to install the sensor. 
and there we go. My TPMS sensor is installed here. All right, so now I'm ready to install this into the tire. What you will notice is I have put the tire upside down. So the outside uh, side wall is actually pointed down. We're gonna shove this inner bead lock inside of there. And the easy way to do that is just collapse it, slip it in, and then just line it up. So it doesn't really make a difference, I don't think, but I put it so that that valve stem is pointed towards the outside uh, of the tire, so pointed down in this case. And then basically I'm just centering this inside the tire. I do want to look at something, and that is on these tires, and you can see it right here, there's often an indicator that shows you the, uh, the light and the heavy spots. So this yellow circle is indicative of a light spot. So generally what you want to do is align your valve stem with that because that valve stem adds extra weight. So coinciding it with the lightest weight spot sort of helps things balance. Now I've got this additional weight adder in, which is my TPMS sensor that's installed in here. What I want to do though is align my TPMS sensor to be opposite of that just to help counterbalance. So what I'm going to do is rotate this in here until the side opposite the TPMS sensor is lined up with that yellow dot. So before I set the rim in, I'm just going to wipe this down. Make sure there's no dirt or grit or grime or anything in there. This actually was my spare tire before, so it hasn't actually been used. It's a pretty clean example. Um, some of my other tires have gotten kind of gritty and nasty. Um, so uh, just you know, wipe those down or wash them off. You want a clean surface because that's also a, uh, a place where you're gonna seal. Then what we're gonna do is take the back half of the rim and just slip it down in there. That's it, just like that. All right, so now, I'm gonna pick this up and I'm going to turn it around. And in this case, I'm gonna lay a couple of pieces of two by four here. So what the two by four does is it's gonna hold up this rim. So when I push down from the top uh, with the other half, um, I don't have to worry about this gap between the rim and the sidewall. Uh, because the two by fours will be there to sort of hold everything in place. All right, so when you put it down, if you have everything lined up the way you want it, it'll make your life a lot easier. So let me show you the alignment I like, um, and then you can decide if that's important to you or not. There are these little slots here. These little slots are where the holes for the air go. Uh, there's an air um, hole in two spots on this inner bead lock. Of course, next to one hole is where we have our TPMS monitor. The other one is where I'm gonna put my valve stem. I told you I want my valve stem to be aligned with that yellow circle. So I've got the slot aligned with the yellow circle. So as you can see here on this outer rim, the valve stem is between two of these bolt holes. So I want two bolt holes straddling this. And I also wanna try and get some symmetry with these longer studs. So um, what I found is there are one, two, three, four, five smaller ones in between the larger ones. Doesn't give me a good center point, but I'll just pick two on one side or the other. So um, that's where I choose to put that alignment. Again, the light spot of the tire aligned with this slot in the inner bead lock, aligned with the valve stem, which is gonna go between two of those studs. So again, just like before, just get this sort of uh, cleaned out of any grit and grime. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit of tire lube around the top of this to help it seat and seal. The other thing I wanna do is put a little bit of anti-seize, just a little bit. I'm not looking to um, coat the entire thing. What I'm doing is just putting basically a little blob on these so as it tightens down, um, it's going to grab a little bit of that anti-seize and help keep things from galling up and uh, protect it from 
uh, seizing. Now this isn't called out in the Hutchinson manual, so you can do this uh, if you like. If you do it, do it at your own risk. But uh, after talking with Paul, um, this uh, seems to make sense. And because I want this to be serviceable uh, in the future, I don't want these things all seized up. Um, it makes sense. Now, a lot of people put thread lock on here, and um, I don't think thread lock is a smart idea for this. So that's just my opinion. I think this little blob of anises will help sort of keep things free. Now, I am not going to adjust my torque values on this. I'm still going to torque it to about 75 or 80 first, and then go around and torque it to 100 for the final torque. Um, again, just a small amount of anises, not a lot. All right, so now, I have this. I'm gonna set this upside down and I'm gonna add the O-ring. Now this white O-ring uh, is hopefully pretty clean because you have pulled it out of the bag. Um, if it's not clean, you should clean it. And then I'm gonna add Vaseline, uh, per the recommendation in the Hutchinson manual, to this to lubricate it and allow it to seal. Now this is your um, barrier between the two uh, halves of the rim that you want to seal so that you don't have any leaks. So I'm basically just coating this uh, with a thin layer of Vaseline. The Vaseline will also help hold it in place um, as you set it uh, into position. Now what you don't want to do is roll this um, into place. So it's tempting to get it close and then just sort of roll it. You more want to stretch it. So think stretch and not roll. So see how I'm just kind of stretching it versus rolling it. I'm just wiping off my greasy finger marks. Trying to leave the Vaseline on the O-ring though. All right, there we go. That's in place. Now we can flip it over and I can look for that valve stem, which I want to go here. So this is where I'm looking for the alignment with these three longer studs, because that's what's gonna start this whole process going down. So in your hardware bag, you're gonna have a bunch of these uh, pretty awesome nuts. These are a self-locking uh, double nut design. So uh, much like using a jam nut, this basically has a built-in jam nut. So you should have exactly enough of these for all of these studs. And what I'm gonna do is start by hand on these three longer studs. These are there so that you can get to them because obviously as we see, um, the tire's not fully seated yet. So these uh, smaller studs aren't accessible to put a nut on. You should be able to hand start them and definitely do that before you add any power tools. And basically what I'm gonna do is just sort of go around and lightly cinch these down. These are a 19 millimeter or a three quarter inch. I'm just easing this into place. As soon as I feel some torque, I'm just letting off and going around, okay? And now what I've been able to do is expose the rest of these studs so that I can go around and hand start them. And once you start tightening these, they say to tighten it in a start pattern, which is pretty traditional for any of these sort of um, circular bolt patterns. What I found that is easy to keep track of, because there's so many um, nuts here to tighten, is to use uh, a, basically a staggered triangle pattern. So starting back with the, um, the long studs, which are pretty easy to, to identify. After that, I go to the next uh, shorter stud, after the long stud. And then now I'm skipping to the second.
Now I'm going to the third. Now the fourth. Now the fifth. Now back to the long. All right, now it looks like I've gotten them fairly well tightened down. So what I'm gonna do now is switch to a torque limiting extension. This is a 75 foot-pounds um, extension. So in theory, this should limit my torque um, to that. And just basically hit these using the same pattern. So basically, I've hit them all to 100 foot-pounds of torque. Do this however you want, but the goal is all of these should be torqued evenly cinched down in some sort of a star, or in my case, a weird triangular pattern that gets me um, that final torque setting. So of course now I hand it over to Paul to uh, air up and then balance, and then we go to the vehicle. All right, so once I get the tire onto the Jeep, I went ahead and uh, rechecked torque on all these to 100 foot-pounds. I'll check them again after about 50 miles. Uh, it does come with a center cap and uh, a bunch of these plastic uh, bolt caps to protect these bolts. I'm gonna leave the bolt caps off until I double check the torque because we know that as this powder coating wears down underneath these bolts, uh, they're probably gonna loosen up a little bit. So that's why we wanna retorque them after 50 miles. Um, and uh, that's it. That is the Hutchinson Rock Monster, and I've got a bunch more to put on, so I'm going to get after it.